Welcome, everybody. It's now 6.05. Uh, if you're just joining, please mute your mics so it doesn't interrupt the presentation. There's a chat section in the lower right-hand side of your screen. If you can put your questions in the chat room, and we'll address those questions at the end of the presentation. This is the CD9 Near South Side Repair and Reconstruction Program, round five. It is, the CPN number is 103-969 and C02445. Presenting today is Jose Orozco, that's myself. Also on the call, we have uh, Mike Brennan with Near South Side. Would you like to say some words, Mike? Sure, thank you, Jose, and, and uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for your time this evening. Um, this is an exciting meeting. Um, obviously, we're talking about some some projects where we'll get into uh, technical details and, and schedules and so forth, but just want to make some kind of big picture remarks at the beginning to make sure that you all have a good understanding of what this program is about and um, in general, what we might expect. Um, so this is exciting. This is actually round five of a program that dates back to 2014. And this is the first extra round. Originally, it was only gonna be four rounds of projects, still was going to include dozens of, of street segments, um, but we were able to add some more money, some more street segments, and um, the streets that we'll talk about tonight were some of those that were added. Um, the purpose of the program, of course, is to reconstruct streets that really haven't seen um, ongoing maintenance over the years. And we're not only addressing the roadway and the, the pavement conditions, um, which in, in all of the on all of these streets, the pavement condition is, is not good and had to meet a, a threshold uh, related to pavement quality just to be included. But we're also um, through partnership with the water department able to address the water and sewer pipes that are located under those streets if those are also in need of repair. So I want to give uh, thanks to all of the city staff involved from Transportation and Public Works and the Water Department. Um, particularly, I want to uh, call out uh, Mary Hanna from Transportation and Public Works, who serves as the program manager for this near Southside Street Repair Program. Um, Alex Schur from ANA uh, Consultants is the lead design engineer, and they have been leading the coordination efforts um, really with hundreds of owners and developers and businesses located along all of these street segments. And, and Mary will have the map uh, where you'll be able to see all of those streets that have been impacted um, over the, the last decade as we've worked to reconstruct these. It really is a transformative program. Um, if you're familiar with uh, areas like South Main Village, where almost all of the street segments east of South Main and north of Pennsylvania have been rebuilt through this program, those are the best examples um, to look at as to uh, you know what to expect um, through this program. Uh, and so really coordination and collaboration is the key to making all this work. The other key partner in this um, particularly on the funding side and just the advocacy side, is our council member uh, for District 9, Elizabeth Beck. Um, she's always a strong advocate um, for resources being directed to the urban core. And through her role as chair of the tax increment reinvestment zone, um, often called TIF number four, the near south side TIF, um, council member Beck has directly delivered those resources um, to this program. So we certainly thank her for her leadership. If, if you don't know what the, the TIF is, just think of it as, as a, an account that receives a, a large share of the property taxes that you all pay uh, in within the near south side. Those taxes are diverted to a special account and those funds in that account can only be spent on infrastructure improvements within our district. And so these are your tax dollars being put to work directly to upgrade the infrastructure um, and support your properties and your businesses. So we thank council member Beck for her leadership. And on behalf of council member Beck, we have Anthony Rojas, her district director here. And so Anthony, I would be glad to pass the mic to you if you'd like to make any open opening remarks before we pass it on to Mary. Thank, thank you, Mike. Um, yeah, we, I know Councilwoman Beck is proud to be able to bring those funds to 
um, this program. Um, and I just really wanted to say thank you for everyone uh, for attending and please share any of the questions that you may have so we can get those answered. But if you have any other concerns or questions following this meeting, I'm going to put my contact information in the chat uh, for you to reach out to. So if there's anything else our office can be helpful for, uh, just let me know and I can make it happen. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Jose, I'll pass back to you. I'll just encourage everybody to listen closely. Um, like uh, Jose said, please post questions in the chat. Um, we'll see a, a presentation, talk about the, or hear about the details, and then we'll be able to get into detailed questions at the end. Thank you very much for being here. And Jose, I'll pass back to you. Thank you, Mike. The purpose of this meeting is to give you the project scope and proposed improvements, as well as the upcoming construction and schedule that's anticipated. On the agenda tonight, I'm going to discuss uh, the program updates, uh, project overview, a summary of improvements, some construction information, and proposed construction schedule. And again, I uh, will address the questions at the end of the presentation. And uh, please put your questions in the chat room. Here's an overview of the different rounds of the CD9 Near South Side Repair Program. Uh, as you can see, the round one is the blue in the picture on the right, round two being the orange, round three, the green, and round four, the red. These are the previously constructed and completed projects. These uh, additional streets are in purple. The, this is the round five. Um, this this project is the round five uh, I'm sorry. Um, the funding sources for this project are TIF number four, uh, TPW, and the Water Department. Some program updates. As you can see, some of the improvements in the previous rounds here in the pictures shown below. Also, we have uh, other pictures we show where we, after we've done the paving, we've upgraded with striping, et cetera. Some overview, uh, this project, again, round five, includes the following streets. The first street being Peter Smith in the upper left hand of the uh, picture. The second is not a street, it's actually an alley. The, and this is just east of Henderson. The third segment is Tucker. The fourth segment is May. The fifth segment, is Galveston. The sixth segment is a, is another piece of Peter Smith. The seventh segment is Sixth Avenue. The eighth segment is South Lake Street. The eighth, the ninth segment is another piece of Galveston. Ten is Pulaski. Eleven is West Morphy, 12 is Travis, and 13 is another piece of West Morphy. Some of the summaries of improvements, as you know, the existing condition is got broken uh, and patched asphalt, uh, really rutted asphalt with potholes, uh, missing or damaged paving, or missing curb and gutter. The water and sewer improvements will be addressing the uh, with what will be adding uh, water new water pipe. Uh, most streets will be getting at least eight to twelve inch of water. We do have one street that is getting thirty inch water uh, water main from in South Lake from Magnolia to Rosedale. Also, we'll be installing some sanitary sewer pipe. It'll be within 6th Avenue and within Galveston. The paving improvements uh, include the following um, criteria. The streets will be re rehabilitated with asphalt and curb and gutter where it's needed. These other safety improvements will be including uh, pro providing 
pedestrian facilities and constructing new sidewalks, ADA ramps to fill gaps where there's no sidewalks, uh, also repair uh, new driveways. We'll also be reconstructing damaged or existing driveways, sidewalks, and additional uh, broken or non-compliant ADA ramps. Some construction information. Um, prior to the construction, seven days prior, you'll be receiving a uh, door hanger. And prior to activity in front of your property, you'll receive a second door hanger. Will your water be turned off? Your water will be turned off for a few hours while they transfer your water to a temporary water main. The contractor will knock on the door and let customer know uh, that the water will be turned off temporarily. This will happen again after the new pipeline has been installed, tested, and uh, approved. And they'll be transferring your meter from the temporary back to our back onto the system on the new water main. Do you replace the water service line up to the house or uh, property? We do not. We connect the water to the meter to the street and the service from the service to the property is the property owner's responsibility. If you see water running down the street, please do not turn it off. The water flow is necessary for flushing the line and water flow will be continuous. During these, during this process, we're testing the water and we're also running tests to make sure the water is safe to consume. Also, uh, during the hotter temperatures with the water main, the temporary water maining being at the surface, it, it will tend to give the water off flavors. It doesn't mean the water is not safe. It's just causes a taste issue. The in the winters, uh, we still let the water run and this is to prevent the water main from freezing. How do I know or how does the temporary water line impact my home or water bill? The during the the water the bill for the water usage will be based on an average monthly basis for your average usage. Will you will you need access to our property? The construction is in the street. If Fort Worth needs access to your property, we will contact you. Will our service sewer service be disrupted? Sanitary sewer service will be will not be interrupted. New sewer service cleanouts will be installed at the property line. The cleanout provides crews easy access if a backup or blockage occurs. The sewer line from the cleanout to your your house or property is the owner's responsibility to maintain. In this next slide, it it shows it how we described. Here we show the clean out, it's either in the parkway or just outside the sidewalk at the property line. And from the clean out to the right in this picture is the city's responsibility. From the clean out to the property is the property owner's responsibility. Same as for the uh, water meter. Will construction affect my irrigation? The contractor has, the contractor has to cap irrigation lines before construction starts. He may knock on your door to turn on your, your sprinkler so you can locate sprinkler heads. And the contractor will replace the damaged irrigation system at the city's expense. What happens if my property is damaged? Please take pictures. We will also be taking pictures of the activities for different reasons. And any damages that were noted, we'll address accordingly. Will there be any lane closures during construction? There will be lane closures during construction when the contractor is installing the water and sewer uh, 
and during the street um, preparation for paving. Signs will be posted. The hours of construction are from 7 to 6, Monday through Friday, and if requested by the contractor on Saturdays from 9 to 5. We do not work on Sundays and we do not work on holidays. How do I report an emergency or non-emergency? The city of Fort Worth has a My Fort Worth app. It, the picture of the app is shown here in the slide. You can report everything in here from potholes to water main leaks to issues with animals, et cetera. There's a variety of different things you can report in the app. Again, this is iPhone and Android friendly. Some construction phasing during the project. As you can see here, first the utilities will go in, the, the water, the sanitary sewer. Uh, these are PVC lines, so you can see the blue and the green in the pipeline. But once, once these utilities have been installed, they will refill that trench and put a temporary asphalt patch over the top. This does not mean they're done. This just means the, the water and sanitary sewer has been installed and at a later time, they'll come back and take care of the roadway. When they come to do the roadway, they'll be replacing any necessary gaps or broken curb and gutter. Then they'll demolish the road and prepare, prepare it for paving and essentially pave after they've stabilized it. The finished product will look as you see. You'll have brand new asphalt paving and curb and gutter and new driveways. Also included in this project is proposed sidewalk. We'll have new concrete sidewalks and new ADA ramps. The schedule for this project we plan to start construction September 3rd with the street segments starting at different times with the project anticipated completion being November 25th or November 2025. Where can I get more information on the project? Monthly, we do monthly updates and you can do a search on the city's webpage uh, near Southside or using the project number 103969 and it'll bring you up to the city's webpage with the information uh, and recent updates on the project. My contact information is here. Uh, again, my name is Jose Orozco. My phone number and email are located here. And my inspector, who's my eyes and ears on the ground, uh, is Charles Hayes. His contact information is also shown here in the slide. Questions? Do we have any questions in the chat? Uh, Jose, we do have a couple questions in the chat if you want to look. Okay. Give me a second. Where is my chat? There it is. Are we able to request modifications to the sidewalk plans on Galveston? How, when, and to whom should we reach out? Wait, people are jumping in. Okay, yeah, that's, I think that's the first question. Reach out to me and I will ad address the question accordingly, uh, whether or not we can make some modifications. It's all based on a case by case situation. Uh, so I can't give you a straight answer. Uh, yes, we can, or no, we can't. It's all case by case. Uh, next question is, our ADA access is only available on Galveston. Will you be able to provide access during construction? We can provide some access during construction, but obviously when we tear out the sidewalk, um, access will be very limited until the new sidewalk gets put in. There's typically a very short window between when it gets demolished to when it gets replaced. 
Jose, I'll, whole... I'll jump in there. This, oh, is, this is Mike. And um, Mark, I don't want to speak for you, but I, I expect that Mark may be representing um, Trinity Presbyterian Church with this question. Yeah, that, yeah. And so, yeah, the timing of that, it, it could be that, you know, obviously you're, you've got a lot going on on Sundays, but if there are other days that um, are, are better suited for that sort of interruption, then I'm thinking that you could speak directly with the contractor and with Jose to coordinate that. Yeah, that, that sounds great, great, Mike. I, I I figured there'd be a way to do that. I just I wanted to bring that up because it will be an issue for us. But you're right; it's just on gotcha. m mostly just on Sundays. Okay, we'll coordinate. We have uh, mentioned that to the contractor, and they are aware. Um, I believe the church is Galveston, and yes, the uh, that area is starting construction first, so. You'll see the the activity happen right away. All right, next question we have is from Sarah Bowden. Is only one side of the street closed at a time? So there is one lane to pass and the driveways are accessible? Short answers, yes, but they're it, during paving activities, it things change. It will be case by case during immediate activities when they're putting down asphalt, the street will be completely closed while they uh, come through and pave. Uh, it's just a minor inconvenience and we ask to ex excuse our progress. Um, but you the short answer is yes, there will be access. Let's see. Austin James. Oh, you put the link in there. Thank you. Uh, how long will it be entirely closed at one time? It's usually just that one, one or two days. Jose, in that situation, is the business owner able to have some input on schedule with the contractor? Yeah, we can coordinate something with the contractor. To make sure that you're not adversely affected, and we'll, like I said, it'll be case by case. We, I can't make a, a, def, a definitive promise of yes, we'll do this, but we'll work it out with the contractor as we get closer to that specific location. Excellent, thank you. And I encourage everybody to uh, write down or copy or screenshot this contact information that Jose has on the screen now. Um, so does the project include pavement markings such as crosswalks? Yes and no. Some locations will get pavement markings, but not every location. It depends on the lo on the specific locations. And that and generally that, what is on the street today will be put back. Correct. The next question is that would be great to coordinate with the contractor. When, okay. Uh, next question is from Maggie Harrison. Will the Morphe Travis construction. Affect daily school operations. Casada is located right at the corner of the two streets. We can coordinate with the contractor to make sure that uh, that any activity that's made is minimized uh, or not minimized. Um, my words lost me. We'll work with the contractor to make sure that uh, we minimize any any uh, negative impacts. Facts, impacts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I was I was trying to, to to unmute myself, but Mr. Roscoe, thank you so much. This is Maggie Harrison. I'm the principal of the school, um, and we're here, you know, operations eight to eight to four. And um, I understand that there's going to be some interruption to all of that. And just in situations when we have no water, we can't, um, you know, we can't hold school. So um, I would greatly appreciate any communication I can provide my, you know, personal and cell phone information uh, to make it as as easy for us as the school and as easy for the construction team. I greatly appreciate that. So yeah, Maggie, we'll, we go ahead, Mary. About, 
sorry, this is Mary Hanna. One of the things we talked about, maybe we can do the water and sewer during the school break. Um, so we'll try like in spring break or something. If uh, I don't know what the timing, but we'll try to do something like that. So sure. Will, Thank you, Mary. We can say yeah. everything, and but um, we also can do it during summer. Um, this project is going to take a while until we finish. Until we are not finishing until next year in November. So maybe we can do some of the activity also in summer. Um, we'll see. Um, uh, Jose, can you go to the schedule back again? Yeah, definitely. Give me a sec. Um, I just want to jump in real quick. So, Morty and Travis, I don't believe we have water sewer replacements. It's just a uh, paving. Okay. There's also part of this is still Maggie Harrison. So there's still so Morphe part of the we have had conversation here. I know um, Mary um, and Aunt Alex are here with uh, with our school here with the diocese of Fort Worth. So uh, it's my understanding that part of the easement is uh, for our parking is going to be taken for the um, for the sidewalk. So um, I know you have on the timeline here between September. 3rd yeah, and March 25th. Um, I was just going to say that um, it's if you're taking anything into consideration, um, we cannot start building a fence around the school property until the street is um, construction is complete and the neighborhood is getting less and less uh, kid friendly with the <laughs> diversion center that was just put on the Morphe and the um, and the crossword. So I, um, I would greatly appreciate you taking that into consideration because we're school. And um, and I have to I have to have a safe environment for the kids. Thank you, Maggie. I don't think we ever received it back, the easement. This is I don't think they will be able to start the first street as showing on that schedule unless I we get it back. This is one of the delays they are having. Mm -hmm. So unless I get the easement, I won't be able to start that street. Okay. Uh, in September. Thank you, Mary. So I, I will okay, follow up. You it was my understanding that you guys got everything that you needed on on their side. So thank you for that. Yeah, we we still need the things from John. John did not get back to us on that. Um, okay. So if we if he can send it to us, we definitely can start first. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to the next question. This is from Sam Smart. What will be the scope of the projects four and six include water and sewer? You may need to go to the map to know what four and six were your numbers all day. Okay. There it is. May and Peter Smith. Okay. Um, so let me jump back to the schedule. Yeah, yeah we're Broadway Baptist Church, so. Okay. Okay. Yes. Include water and sewer. That, I believe we're starting uh, this September in that area. Uh, where's my schedule? Here it is. Yes. Sam, I remember that I, Peter Smith has water, I believe. Yeah, he's Alex asking for the water scope. Yes, there is water in, in Peter Smith, and there's also wa uh, water in May. They're happening. The installation hap is going to happen at different times, as you can see in the schedule. The Galveston is also going to go in with... Uh, at it, uh, right behind Peter Smith. Peter Smith does, has very little water that's going to go in. Or I say very little, not a whole lot of water main, maybe a block or two. Um, let me let's see. The Galveston is probably going to be the most intrusive for you. And a little bit of May, because that is the full length. Uh, let's see. Next question is from Angela. Uh, from Angela, are copies of the construction drawings available as public record to review? Uh, Mary, would you like to answer that? 
uh, you can submit a public request um, for the blend and we can um, answer through that. Thank you, Mary. Can we can we just get more information as to what the um, who is requesting, like which property? Because um, it may be helpful just to coordinate directly. Um, I can see the PE after Angela's name, so it might be that she's working on a project. Uh, and no, in that case, yeah. let's, let's. I believe Angela okay, should have talked. No, this is, uh, this is Angela Perry speaking. I am with Maggie Harrison at the Casada School, and I was just curious if I could see at least the, the particular plans that affect that property because I'm helping to back her up. Gotcha. Okay. Mary, if we could, um, I just want to make it easy and quick for us to dive into details with these property owners if we, if we can. Would they still need to, to submit a formal request? If they have a, if they want only their property, we can share that, but not the whole set. If they, gotcha. you only yeah, have, that's what I was talking about. You want to see what's going on in front of your address, we can definitely send you that sheet or this. But if you want the whole set, this is, you have to go through the PIR. So that's a difference. So you said like the copies of construction drawing, so I assume the whole thing. But if you only want a specific property, you can send Jose an email um, saying what is your address. We can share the blend in front of your address. And we can discuss and see if you want us to change something or you want a water or sewer connection. I don't know, depending on what you need. We can do that. Thank you, Mary. This is Maggie Harrison, and um, I believe that looking at the emails um, with um, my colleague here, um, that information uh, that you requested the easement public that that was sent back to you in January. You were copied. John sent it, so I can just go ahead and resend it to you. No, we sent him uh, something new. It need to be done. Okay. It was the change um, the easement document, and we shared it with John. I will I'll okay. send it to you, um, thank you. Or send me an email and I will share the latest email with John. Of course, thank you, Mary. Thanks. Okay. Uh, the next question, another one from Sarah uh, Bowden. Just clarifying, there will be no streets parking. There will be no street parking on South Lake from December to January. Um, that's not completely correct. The South Lake Street will be getting in with a large diameter transmission water main. Uh, during that activity, as the contract progresses, he will, uh, they will make a determination of whether or not street side parking will be available. Uh, outside of that, if they're in between uh, activities, whether it's the installation of the main or paving, though you'll still be able to access your property. Hopefully that answers your question. I believe that's all the questions. If I missed one, I apologize. The, the chat group was jumping with a lot of uh, questions as they jump as they came in. I would say there's a follow up from Sarah. There, I just saw it pop in. I'm more so wondering about customers accessing the property. Lots of people park there for the restaurants on Magnolia as well. Uh, Are we talking about the alley? Sarah, Sarah? Is that the alley? Or which property? No, it's Lake Street. It's Lake Street? Yeah, yes. Lake Street has a a very narrow alley that's got a street name actually i can't think of the name off the top of my head no this is lake between magnolia and rosedale so it's a street that accommodates um cars going in both directions and um parking spaces yes. and as sarah said it's it's important for us to keep the parking spaces functional for as long as possible so 
if there's a gap between the utility work where they're digging the trench and then repairing the trench and then the pavement repair is going to happen, you know, a, a month later during that month between the utility work and the pavement work we need for the whole street to be available for parking. The contractor will have uh, tempor temporary plating and where they're working they won't have the entire street open at once they go at a pipe segment at a time um and the pipe oh, segment yeah. varies in length depending on the okay, size of the pipe go ahead well, the street is too, too small i don't think it will be safe for traffic and the contractor at the same time um so we will be have you send an email to jose um and then before we start the construction we can have a meeting uh with you with the construction office and the contractor and discuss how to keep your access but i don't think it will be safe for traffic and barking and the contractor working there it is not a wide street um especially with the large diameter so they're going to go deep so the trench is going to be, be deep in south lake that is one of the um things that we have to think about it, um, but we can. Anyone more specific or anything like we can go and meet with you and discuss that with the contractor. Um, I would suggest wait a little bit until we reach the point of South Lake um, at this location, since we this is not the first tree they are starting. At. Yeah, South Lake. We're starting in December of this year. So we still have some time before we get to uh, Lake Street. Okay. Any other questions? Jose and Mary, I think it might be helpful if you can speak to any restrictions about cutting into the new streets after construction in case there are any folks that have a project located along these street segments that you know might be looking at making a utility connection um, before or after the street is completed how does that work so we have a utility cut policy ordinance that um any new street uh less than two years old if anyone cut for any utility connection they will have to be the full width of the street for a whole block. So if you are want to connect, let's say South Lake, um, any in between Magnolia and um, Rosedale in this segment. Um, um, so let's say between Magnolia and there, so you will have to be the full width for the full length between Magnolia and Oleander, even if it's one cut. Um, after the two years, uh, we'll have to assess the street condition and it will be, um, you have to bathe half of a lane, um, for at least 50 feet or more of a lane. So, if you want connection, you need to tell us now, we need to get with water development and pay for the fees so we can install it. So you will need to give them. Uh, Jose name and the project name and number, and they will get in contact with us and tell us what type of connection you want, and we will give them the pricing based on our project. But yes, for two years after we finish the project, no one can cut the street. So if you have any plan for any project, please let us know now. Thank you, Mary. I saw somebody that was previously on the call representing one of the larger projects, but they may have dropped off. So I'll do what I can to make sure that they also know that. Okay. One of the follow ups from Sarah is stating if we wanted to wait until after Christmas. Um, part of the issue with the transmission main, we are under tight restrictions with the water department for being able to shut these mains down because these are the mains that provide water to the water tanks that provide water to the distribution system, the smaller mains essentially that service the houses. So that's part of our restriction in the schedule uh, for this larger water main. 
Uh, Greg or Mary or Zach, you have anything to add to that? No, Jose, that's exactly what you said. Because of the size of these mains, we have to um, do part of the project when we don't have as much demand for, for water. So I'm assuming it's going to be after summer for the 30 inch water line. On this schedule, it has it starting in December. Is there any way that that can shift to January so that you're still in the winter, um, but you're you're past Christmas? The schedule, unfortunately, there's the line is scheduled with very various other shutdowns that are done on a specific line. Um, we can ask the question is. To Zach to see if he can follow up to see if the schedule can slide that specific uh, segment, but quite honestly, I, I don't know if the short answer is going to say yes, we can move it. Um, unfortunately, we that's not my call. Are we talking gotcha. about the thirty inch waterline? Yes. Yes. Oh, I can follow up with uh, plant ops and. Uh, um, see if, if that's that's allowable. But um, my understanding is we want to be done before we hit the demand too. So um, I'll I'll have to provide an answer this week. Thank you, Zach. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I think we've got it, all the questions asked or answered. Um, let's see, just confirm we request a construction diagram showing all that will happen. I'm not sure I understand the question. Construction diagram, construction schedule. Uh, uh, I, I meant in front of, specifically in front of our property. Um, what what will happen in May, what's specifically going to happen on May Street and Peter Smith. And, Peter Smith. and, and we have the issue of, of a chiller yard being being across Peter Smith and coming under um, chiller, lines coming. chiller lines coming under. So who, who worries about that? Um, we do. Uh, yeah. We have to uh, make sure the contractors are aware of where they are and make sure that uh, they don't strike them during the excavation. The, uh, as far as the, like I mentioned in the earlier part of the presentation, the water, the temporary main will be transferred over to the, or the water will be transferred over to the temporary water main while the new water main is installed. Once the new water main is installed, you'll have a temporary disruption as they transfer you back to the new main. Right. Uh, that that uh, downtime, we can, as we get into that construction, uh, that day we can work out with the contractor at that time. I can't tell you right now that, yeah, they're going to do that next week, even though they are the, Let's say they they start September the third. I can't tell you that they're going to do it the the fifth. They're just they're mobilizing on the third, and they start construction. The day by day is activities is the contractor's uh, responsibility, and we can work with them. Tanner, I see you on the call. Do you have anything to add to that? No, that's about right. Um, we. We try to start when, you know, we say on September, but it kind of goes day by day of what we run into and what kind of happens on the job site. All right. Some, sometimes they, they'll work faster. Uh, some days, because there's a lot of stuff in the ground, they have to work a lot slower. So other days will be a little slower because of what they're excavating as they go. Uh, Okay, I don't see any new questions. Um, 
Again, my contact information is shown on your screen. Um, you can email me or call me directly. Charles uh, is my inspector. Uh, he is my eyes and ears in the field. I do go out to the field, um, but Charles is my eyes, my day-to-day -day eyes and ears. Um, aside from that, we appreciate your time and look forward to uh, a successful project. Thank you, everybody. Oh, go ahead. Thank you, Jose. Well, I was going to say, all right, will this slide presentation be posted on the website? You may have already mentioned that. Yes, I'm going to see. I believe we put it on the web page. I'm not completely entirely sure. I think we do do that. Um, but yeah, this, this so presentation the, uh, will be link, available. A link to the video and the presentation will be available on the web page for this project. Excellent. We just got a late question from uh, Katrina Carpenter um, requesting the plan sheets for the alley just north of Pennsylvania. And um, Katrina, make sure that you copy the contact information here. And um, Jose and Mary, if we could just get those sheets um, sent to Katrina, uh, you can send them to me and I can forward them on um, if you don't have Katrina's email. No, unless she emails me, I don't have her information. Okay. All right. I'll, Katrina, I'll, I can send that email on your behalf. Thank you, Mike. You bet. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.